Many ITX gaming PCs are normally very expensive, but today we're going to show you a little secret on how you can build it for cheap. For only $500, we're going to be able to play games at 1080p, medium high settings, no problems whatsoever, while also maintaining that compact design. We're going to put this thing together and see how it performs, but first, a word from today's sponsor. Black Friday is just around the corner, and it's a time when consumers are looking for the best deals and the most innovative products. Today's video is brought to you by the Anchor Solx F2000 Powerhouse 767, and it falls right into both categories. Without frequently extreme weather causes power outages during the holiday season, there's no better time than now to start your home backup solution. The Anchor Solx F2000 comes with long-lasting Life PO4 batteries that will remain healthy for up to 3,000 charge cycles, which is equivalent to 10 years of use. When paired with the rapid recharge feature, you can go from 0 to 80% in just one hour. It also comes equipped with the TT30 RV port, which is perfect for those traveling or on the go. And while speaking of traveling, let's not forget about the ultra-durable wheels and easy-tow retractable handle that makes it easy movable. With a 5-year warranty, 2,048 watt-hour battery capacity, and 2,400 watt standard AC output, the Anchor Solx F2000 Powerhouse 767 is built to last and provide efficient power when you need it most. If you're interested in buying one today or in learning more, check out the link in the description down below. Big thanks again to Anchor Solx for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get back to it. All right, guys, so to kick things off, we have the Ryzen 3 4100 4 core 8 thread. And this is just such a great CPU because it is $64 brand new on Amazon. It's literally in the box with a stock cooler. And it is going to be similar to something like an i3 10100F. And just like the i3, it does not have Gen 4 support, meaning don't buy a Gen 4 SSD. And also, this case we're going to be using only has a Gen 3 cable, so it really works out perfectly. And for the motherboard, we have a B550M ITX. Now, keep in mind, you do need to make sure that you do get an ITX board. This case only fits those, but this does have Gen 4 support. It is a really nice board. It actually has uh, two RAM slots. It has two four pins for the CPU, so you could go with the much higher end build. And if you wanted to have Gen 4 support, you could get something like a Ryzen 5 5600. Now for the RAM, we have this Team Group T-Force Vulcan Z 16 gig kit. This is 3200 megahertz. It's gonna be running a dual channel. It's gonna look really good because this case, you don't really see a ton in it, so we didn't wanna pay extra for RGB RAM. And for the SSD, we have this crucial PCIe Gen 3 NVMe SSD, and this is an M.2 form factor, so we don't have to worry about running those extra cables. We can literally just plug this straight into the board, and it's a whole terabyte of storage for very cheap. Now for the graphics card, we chose the GTX 1660 Super, specifically a used Zotac model, only because it's a really good card that works well in Gen 3, so we don't have to worry about any Gen 3 bottlenecks here. And it has 60 gigs of VRAM to where you'll have, well, enough performance under the hood to play the latest AAA titles on medium settings and also those esports titles on higher settings. Now for the power supply, we took a little bit of a risk here because the most expensive parts of mini ITX builds are the motherboards and the power supplies. SFX power supply is gonna be pretty expensive, but this 500 watt from a PV is one we have used before here on the channel for a couple of builds, but it is a lower end power supply. So if you wanna spend a bit more, you can, but just know minimum for like an SFX power supply is like $100 plus. So we're kind of experimenting here with this one, but it has all the power connectors and wires we need to power this build. And last, but certainly not least, the case. I'm gonna open it up for you guys so you can see it. This is the S300, which is like a briefcase style case. I believe we got it in the white model. And the reason this is a really cool case is one, it's compact, it's a small form factor, and it comes with a riser cable. So you don't have to pay extra for the riser cable. And it comes in at under $100, which I think for mini ITX, this is like the easiest option to get yourself into. And we went with the white version because we did build a PC with this um, a couple months ago for about $700 with the black version. So I thought, let's mix it up and use the white version. And as you can see, this is such a tiny case. It's so cool. They give it so much performance inside this thing. And theoretically, this could fit in like a suitcase or something if you wanted to travel with it. It comes with this nice handle for durability. And yeah, decent airflow all the way around. Um, we wouldn't really recommend going much higher than a Ryzen 3 4100. You can, but definitely go for another aftermarket cooler. You'll see the temperatures when we put this thing together. But I'm very excited to put this thing together and see how it performs because for $500 Mini ITX, you don't normally hear that. Let's put it together and see how it does.
All right, guys, we are playing Overwatch 2, and we're, we're being pretty bold here. We're actually running ultra settings at 1080p. We get the frame rate um, basically unlocked at 300 FPS, and we're actually not doing any upscaling. I haven't set to 100% scale, so this is true 1080p ultra FSR. 100 plus FPS, baby. I'm ready to dive. I'm ready to dive. And those temperatures are looking good. Um, I know we mentioned if you do go with like a higher end CPU, you might have to add um, some low profile fans to the case. Um, we've had that happen with the higher end CPU, or you can get one of those like aftermarket low profile coolers instead of the stock cooler that only have like- I think it's just the cooler really. Yeah, yeah, it's normally just the cooler that's limiting. So you can get a different cooler if you want to, but obviously with this configuration of 4100, it's only pulling 1920 watts and we're under 60 degrees Celsius. And the 6060 Super, even the GPUs, they, they're fine. They have plenty of ventilation. Go ahead, Reinhardt, de-mech me. That's all that'll happen. <laughs> I will become Baby Diva. Oh. Oh. Baby no, 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 Diva. No, 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 no. Oh god, Hanzo can headshot me here. And we do want to spend a bit more money too on a higher end GPU. You can get like a three fan card as well. There's room for bigger GPUs in this system. We have like a little compact two fan card. the size of a GPU. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that's just great about this case, the little dual chamber design, and that's how you're able to fit so much in such a small package. Small packages. Oh, that's a bad old freaking Ryan, man. Just ate my old. Oh. <laughs> it's a try me. My healers are just healing me so much and I really have to like play. And just do this thing. Oh. My god. Oh. Ha! Ah, ah. ah. Baby Diva. <laughs> Baby Diva. This is a good experiment of this uh, power supply that is technically a pretty low end power supply considering all SFX power supplies um, are really expensive. That's the only one that's somewhat budget friendly and so far it's doing good. I mean, this system is pulling, let's see. 200 watts from the wall right now, so definitely got more wattage to work with. And I feel like that's a good rule of thumb if you're gonna take a risk on a budget power supply, definitely just don't push the wattages as long as you're well below the actual rated watts. I, you're normally gonna be fine. Dude, I'm so tired of this mercy just rezzing people. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? I'm gonna chase you back to your spawn. Yeah, yeah, look at you, look at you. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye now. <Adam. laughs> Hit my butt. Nerf this. Nerf this, nerds. We got one. And I can't wait for Mercy to res them. Mercy, I swear to God. Yeah, Mercy. Res that. Oh. And now I'm gonna die. Now your baby. Bruh. Bruh. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at your teammates. They're with you. Do not let this Mercy res, man. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, the game goes on. But Greg, you can't even hit me if you wanted to, fam. <laughs> You can't even get to my level. Ow. <laughs> Ow. Oh wow, you Holy got crap. ejected. Did he hit those shots? He, he did. Yeah, go ahead, try to hit me. Come on, come on, hit me, come on. Ow, oh. Oh, <laughs> oh soldier boom pack. Oh, oh shit, I just lost my teammates on boy. No! That wasn't their fault, actually. They got, they got bolted, so. Uh-oh. Ah. Oh, I forgot about D.Va mech damage. Dude, that does so much. Oh no, they got res. Man, you know, it would have been cool to have someone on our team that like rezzed or did like anything good, you know? It would have been cool, crazy. but unfortunately it didn't work out. But this PC is working out PC's so far. PC is great though. Let's see what it can do in Fortnite. Well, thanks to Fortnite, I am slowly plummeting randomly at the end. But you know what? It is what it is. Um, we are on high settings. I'm gonna drop these down to medium. We're on balanced TSR. We'll see if the stuttering goes away. I have a feeling it's TSR causing the stuttering right now. And oh. it is a budget CPU, so we'll see here. Oh God, it's stuttering so bad. This oh. is our first game too. A lot of times we yes. notice Fortnite just loves loading in those textures the first couple of games. Yeah, so we'll land here and see. I think this, yeah, once the CPU usage goes down from 100%, and when it hits 100, we definitely start chugging a little bit. But we're on DX12. Um, which is optimal, but not as optimal for, uh, in oh, oh goodness. All right, this is right eye because of lag. Oh goodness. Ah! Please. <laughs> oh. Yeah, definitely some stutters. Not, not ideal. I would say maybe with this update, you really want a somewhat newer CPU. Cause I mean, the last few times we've tested this game um, on this new update, we've been running Relatively newer hardware, um, but so far, I've done a little, a little chunky here with this 4100, so we'll see if that gets any better. It's acting strange, you know? It, just, it doesn't seem right. Yeah, if it doesn't run great, we'll probably run it back on like DX11. Maybe DX12 just does not like. I can't even try performance mode and see what yeah. happens. But we'll go and land. We'll see what happens. Let's go. 
Hey. Hey. Are you over there? Really? <laughs> okay. Oh! Dance for me! I like the, the boogie bombs are like one of the most OP like things in the game. It is. It literally renders okay. someone useless. They're being shot from behind now. Yeah, I know. Oh! That's a banana! Oh my goodness, what is happening? Oh, you're right in front of me. No. You blended in. <laughs> Saw it. Yeah, I would say it's a playable experience. It's probably just down to optimization with settings. Um, definitely some center here and there. Um, but again, we're talking about hardware that would be more in the like $400 range using micro ATX parts. So budget PC gonna budget PC, especially in Fortnite because it could be so up and down. Oh, he is a oh predator. Shaggy Snacks 420. What a what a real name. What a great name. That, that was a real guy right That's there. Terrifying. But um, hey, you know what? Fortnite was okay. Not an amazing experience. I'd probably dial back to DX11 or performance settings on this PC if you want a really locked high refresh rate experience. But so far, pretty solid for this compact little computer. Let's play some more demanding titles and then wrap this video up real quick. Okay, guys, we just got done testing Little Fury over here, and this PC did really well for the price. And considering that we did use something a little older, like the 4100 with the 1660, it was actually a pretty good pairing. But obviously, your esports titles, where it's going to be really utilizing those newer CPU cores, those are where you might want to change the CPU out. Yeah, upgrading to a higher end CPU, like a 5600, would be a good option. And as you see from the other games we tested, it is a budget PC in the sense that it's only going to be great for lower end games. But yeah, upgrading the CPU to something like a Ryzen 5 5600 would be a good option if you're wanting to get better performance. But with higher end games as well, you could get 60 FPS on lower settings, but ideally this is an eSports machine that has a solid upgrade path and the portability. I mean, you can't really complain about how small this computer is. And for $500, I think it's great for those looking to get into mini ITX on a budget. So if you want to build this yourself, check the links in the description down below. They will be affiliate links. And they will help us out. Let us know what you think of this form factor and this case in particular because I'm very fond of it and I wonder what the maximum potential is of a case like this. As always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toastybros and do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey, we'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye. This PC right here will be available at PCBros.Tech along with many other mini ITX PCs. PCBros.Tech, we sell gaming PCs, gaming laptops, and so much more. Use code TOASTYBROS200 to check out. You'll save 2% your next purchase. See you guys later. Goodbye.